what exactly is economics? Is it just about money, banks, and stock markets? Not quite. It is my second episode on Money Talks, Economics Made Simple. It is your go-to series to understanding the powerful economic ideas shaping your world without the jargon. In this episode, we go back to the basics in defining economics as a science without any jargon, as promised, and we will go to its origins, uh, its subdivisions, and its incontestable relevance in today's world. Economics is actually the science of choices, how individuals, businesses, and nations decide to use limited resources to meet unlimited wants. It's everywhere. In the price of your morning coffee, the rent you pay, the job you choose, even the policies your government makes. But for many of us, the moment we hear terms like macroeconomics, opportunity cost, or market equilibrium, we tune out, thinking it's too technical or not for us. I'm here to change that. On this channel, we're going to go back to the basics breaking down complex economic ideas into simple, relatable insights you can use in daily life. From supply and demand to, gro to global trade, from household budgets to national income, I'll help you understand economics the way it was meant to be. Clear, powerful and relevant. Start with this playlist. Hit the subscribe button and let's dive deep into the understanding of economics. Let's talk about its origins. Where did economics begin? The word economics comes from the Greek word oikonomia, which means household management. In ancient times, economics was about how households and communities managed limited resources, food, tools, time to survive and prosper. But as societies grew more complex, trade expanded, money was introduced, and cities turned into nations. Economics evolved as well. The birth of modern economics um, took place uh, sometime in the 18th century uh, with the Scottish philosopher Adam Smith, who is often called the father of economics. In 1776, he published The Wealth of Nations, which introduced the idea of the invisible hand, how individuals pursuing their own interests can benefit society as a whole. Early economists were mainly concerned with big questions. What creates wealth? Why do some nations prosper while others don't? How do markets work? But soon, it became clear that, it, that to understand the economy, we need to look at both the big picture and the small details. That's how economics branched into two parts, microeconomics and macroeconomics. What is microeconomics? Microeconomics is the branch of economics that looks at individual parts of the economy consumer, businesses, prices, and markets. It asks questions like, why does the price of coffee change? How does a company decide how much to produce? What happens when there's more demand than supply? In definition, microeconomics is the study of how individuals and businesses make decisions about the allocation of limited resources. Microeconomics zooms in on the small picture. It looks at how individuals, households and businesses make decisions. It explains things like, why do prices go up or down? How much of something should a business produce? Why do we choose one product over another? Concepts like demand and supply, price elasticity, and market structures like monopoly, competition, live here. 
It's extremely relevant today, especially when discussing things like fuel prices, rent, wages, competition, or your personal budgeting decisions. What is macroeconomics? Macroeconomics is the second branch of economics, which looks at the entire economy of a country or even the world. It focuses on things like national income, GDP, which we spoke about in my previous episode, inflation and deflation, employment and unemployment, government policies like interest rates and taxation, international trade and exchange rates. In definition, microeconomics, sorry, macroeconomics is the study of the overall functioning and performance of an economy, especially at the national or global level. It's what you hear about uh, on the news. The economy is growing, the interest rates are rising, there is a recession. That's all part of macroeconomics. Macroeconomics, uh, the economics of nations and the global economy, as they call it, zooms out to the big picture. It actually focuses on how entire countries and economies perform. It tackles GDP related questions, inflation and unemployment related questions, relates to how does a country grow its economy? Why do governments raise or lower interest rates? Uh, it's the branch you hear most often in the news when people talk about economic growth, recessions, national debt and trade. Um, it's that part of economics which we discuss a lot at social gatherings. Understanding both micro and macro economics helps you see the full picture. Why your grocery bill is higher this month is a microeconomic related question. And why inflation is hitting the country? Macroeconomics related question. Why your job offers a certain salary? Again, microeconomics. And why interest rates are being raised by the central bank? Macroeconomics. In today's fast moving globalized world, these two branches help us navigate everything from personal finances to government policies and international crisis. So folks, next time you hear words like GDP, inflation or market demand, don't tune out, please don't. These concepts shape the world around you. Stay tuned and we will unpack each concept here at Money Talks Economics Made Simple. Subscribe, click the playlist, because economics isn't just about for economists. It is for each one of us. Thank you.